I mean, people were outing me when I was at Channel 7. You know, there was a lot of rumor about me being out at parties and all of that, which, which is why it was funny to me when people said um, that I came out in whatever, 2012? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I felt like I was pretty slammed for it through a lot of my career in the gossip sections, you know? It'd be like, he was at Roxy, he was at Fire Island, he was doing it. And I'm like, well, well okay. I, did, I kind of thought that was out. I didn't know. What about how is that for you, Ruben? Like when there was all these headlines, you know, you are the person marrying Sam. Were you like, why is this such a big deal? That was so interesting because at the time we didn't thought of that, right? We just... We were just we, kind of in just, our own heads. It was just our own ha head and we... we because we met in a New Year's Eve party, mm -hmm. right? A year after that, we got engaged in the same party in the, with the same place. And we decided to get married the following year. And uh, at the time, I think we were so absorbed about our life and what we would do, then we didn't touch the impact then that will have. And we were so involved with each other because this was, we had found each other and we were so kind of like into it at the time and, and into each other at the time that we weren't kind of outward looking. So it wasn't something that we had structured. We're, we're kind of not that well planned. If you, if you think of us as a couple, yeah, we're kind yeah, of really yeah, not that yeah. well planned. But actually, after I felt the impact, after we announced I felt the impact, because people start to reach me by email or on social media and telling their personal stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. like a heartbreaking many times. Oh, because, really? Yep, yep. You can tell that story. And I remember then I received like a letters from like a, the, one of the stories was the lesbian couple who was together for more than 20 years and they own a pharmacy in the middle of the, like a, in the countryside, but no one knows they, they are a couple. They thought they was cousin and they feel so happy for us because we could announce our wedding publicly. And we could have the life they wish they could they have, they but could they have. cannot because they community. Uh, and, and they would not have been accepted. And we were standing in the airport in Washington, D.C. I think we had been to see my family and we we're in the long TSA line. And all of a sudden behind us, there's this like commotion and there's people, you know, hey, rah, rah, and we're like, what's going on? And I mean, it's super long. Line. And we're turning around and there's this woman kind of fighting her way through the crowd. And at some point, she's making eye she contact us. with us, and we realize she's coming to us, and we're like, "What? What? What? What, what, what just happened?" I, I, tell me if I don't get this right. So she, she's like, "I just wanted to come talk to you two. This is right after it had been in the papers, right after it had been announced, and she wanted to tell us about her daughter who was in the military, who was then that who had never been able to say she was gay and never been able to express her love and had a girlfriend, and she was going to." come out because of this and how proud she was. Am I, did I get yeah, this yeah. right? And after she saw our announcement, she got the courage to come out to the superiors uh, in her job. And she's actually was well received. And, uh, and now she was out in her job and they was about to have a baby. And that, that, that woman, wow. was awful. she was really happy and crying, say, and I was, she was happy to be a grandmother. She will be a grandmother and yeah. she want to thank us for that. But in our head, we didn't have that impact. You know, you don't know. You just take care of your life. You have no idea how much lives you touch in a, how much political was what we did. Yeah. Totally. Who, when you guys met, who kind of made the move on who first? Like, that's such a funny story. Um, I remember. I'll, I'll keep the. I'll keep it all clean. But I remember walking in. We have a mutual friend, and we had not met before. And um, he has a, a home here in Miami, and he has a New Year's Eve party every year. And I remember walking into the kitchen, and and there's this guy. Um, he had a fedora on and he was kind of all moody and kind of on the counter. And I was just like, oh, that is attractive. You know, as I get in my mind, as I walked in, I'm like, oh, that's, that's something. Um, and then went in to say hi to all of my friends. 
we talked that night at that party and then we met at another party later really? and agreed that we would go out. Um, so we exchanged numbers then at the second party that we met at. Um, but I knew at the first party, I knew I was like, oh, hey, that's, that's something over there. I, I, I don't, you have to tell your version. Right? <laughs> no, that was true, that was true. We almost didn't, didn't talk with each other in that party, but I looked at him and I was like, okay, well, he's in Miami. I will probably will meet him in the, at the beach in the next days. But in the same night, casually, we end up meeting in a second or third party. Mm -hmm. And in that party, we exchanged numbers. And that was it. Well, yeah, we went out. Um, I, I think I changed my flight because I think he called me the next day. Okay, you want to sell the details? We wait, 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 don't tell all the details. <laughs> I, think, I think I changed okay. my flight because he did yeah. call me okay. and asked me out. Well, the next day, I was like, we met in the second party, right? And I was like, uh, we, he had his friends, I had my friends, and we are like, uh, I was like, uh, just give me your phone number and we talk tomorrow. I know how this works. You have your friends, I have mine, let's talk tomorrow. Okay, he gave me his phone number. The next day I call and, uh, and I ask him, I say, oh, what are you doing tonight? And he's like, uh, no, nothing, I'm free. And I say, okay, let's hang out tonight, let's have dinner. I say, okay. But what I didn't know <laughs> was he was on the way to the airport <laughs> when I called. <laughs> uh, then you tell this. Yeah, that's true. I was at a friend's house. Um, I had already checked out of the hotel. Um, and I was at a friend's house and we were having lunch or something. And uh, he heard my, my friend heard me make plans for the night. And he's looking at me like I'm crazy. And I hung up the phone. He goes, well, I guess you're staying. I said, yeah, I'm staying. I got a date. And so I had to call and change the flights and do all of that. And then I, I stayed another night just to go out with him. And we went out every weekend because I would go to Miami every weekend then. And he was living in Miami. And so every weekend after that, we went out. Wow. Um, yeah, it was, it, we, we never stopped, never stopped going out. Is this why I'm single? Because I've never changed a flight for anyone. <laughs> I mean, that's like pretty serious when you change a flight. I mean, I don't, know. I don't know. I just think, you know, you know, something's different or special, you know, um, you just kind of have this feeling. And I think you have to trust me. I'm no expert on relationships or doing anything right. But I think you know, and I, have, I think you have to listen to it. Totally. Do you think the media, like, you know, we still have like actors that are coming out, you know, like you look at like Ryan Murphy and like Pose, like, you know, like the largest all trans cast ever, like Shonda Land and just like, where do you think the media is now with it all? I mean, like, have we come really far? Do we have a long way to go? Like in your opinion? We've, we've definitely come really far because there is representation and you can have a career. Um, listen, as, as supportive as we want to say that we are as a community, we, we aren't. You know, we don't wrap around people and protect them. We tend to pick at them for why didn't you come out earlier or what da 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 You know, and in these moments, I've, been, I've had both feelings about it. I'm interested to hear what you think about it. But, I, now I'm on the side of people will come to terms with their feelings and their ability to say who they are when they're ready. And you can't understand when they're ready. That has to be when they're ready. It can be their family, it can be their religion, it can be whatever. But when they do, it's up to us to kind of say, okay, we support you in that and let's, let's move you forward. Um, instead of saying, well, why didn't you do it then? And, da, 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 da. and how about what you said back then? How about that? You know, People come to terms with who they are when they come to terms with it. And you just have to, they need it. They need a, a, a community that will embrace them. I think we've got a long way to go in that. And I think we've slid backwards, certainly since 2016. But I think we, we can leap forward. And I think we're doing better than we were. Well, we, uh, we cannot forget that uh, I'm, I'm really optimistic about usually about most of the things. And uh, if uh, we see... <clears throat> the situation 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you won't see all that representation even on the media. 